All right. Hi, guys. Welcome. Stephanie Pepper here. I am going to get started. We've got some people still kind of funneling in, but uh, if uh, you already know that we upload these on our YouTube channel, so if you miss anything, you can always go back and watch them. But today we're going to uh, just show you guys some of the big things that just came out in the recent update. Uh, we did push out one update, uh, and then following that update, we did push out a second one uh, pretty close after the first one that we sent out this quarter. Um, it had a, a couple of fixes in it, a couple of additional features. So I am going to be reviewing uh, both versions uh, 10015 and 10016. So if you go to your release notes, uh, if you're unfamiliar where that is, in the help menu at the top right corner of your eManage application, uh, and you view those release notes, you're only going to see 10016, I believe. But if you click on the link in there, it'll take you to all of the recent release notes. So just keep in mind, um, I'm only going to be reviewing uh, some of the really important ones that I want to kind of make sure everybody's aware of. Um, so make sure you go back and read those release notes to, to make sure you uh, 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 reviewed everything that you might need to be aware of. Um, as always, uh, administrators, I will need you to go in and download your default grid layouts from the file menu. Only one admin needs to do so. Again, that's file, download, default grid layouts. And I'll probably say that one or two more times uh, because there are um, some updates that are coming out that require you to do that in order to see some of these things that we have been uh, making some changes to. So again, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, for those of you who have just joined in, um, I'm Stephanie Pepper and we are going to review uh, what has come out in the recent updates. So let's get started. Um, well, first slide here, we're going to talk a, a, about a couple of admin settings that we just added in. So anybody who's not admin, you can kind of zone out for a moment here. But um, we did add a couple of settings in the administrator application. The first one here, uh, we did add a checkbox uh, called uh, and the, it's worded create timesheets from calendar right here in your database settings. So when you open up your administrator application, your database settings will be under tools. By default, this is gonna be unchecked for everyone. So the, only the people who are processing timesheets from the calendar, so turnkey, I think you guys are one of them. Anybody else who's on the call, if you are processing timesheets from your installation calendar, so that's under the human resources menu in the regular application, if you are doing so, you need to go in and in your database settings, mark, uh, uh, check this setting that you do create timesheets from the calendar. What this is mostly affecting for my users who are not doing so, who are not processing time from the calendar, you're going to see when you go to schedule things, so it affects my operations team, my schedulers. When you go to schedule your resources, your internal crew members, uh, there was a dialog box that popped up that you had to uh, pick their pay schedule and whatnot. Just a dialog box that we don't want you to be bogged down with if you're not processing time from the install calendar. So a little time saver there. Um, so if you do not have that checked, you are not processing time from the calendar and you go to process, um, add your installers or your internal resources onto an installation item, this dialog box should no longer pop up. For those of you who have just been join, joined in and, and those of you who are with us right now, um, feel free to chat in. I, I, I know that everyone's muted. This is that webinar setting in uh, Microsoft Teams. So feel free to use the chat room uh, to uh, add any questions there. I'll leave some time for questions at the end. So I won't review them right away, but I will get to them, I promise. Uh, a second admin setting that we added in, again, in the database settings, so that's in your admin application, tools, database settings, we did add a, an ability to adjust your quote expiration days. Um, so right, uh, everybody uh, that has been using the application, it was just kind of a default setting behind the scenes for 30 days, all quotes were just defaulted out to expire after 30 days. We have adjusted it where you guys can control that now, and you can adjust how, uh, when you want your quote default expiration date to be, how many days out. 
Um, some document enhancements we made. Uh, a little side note here, I don't have images for every single bullet point throughout this slideshow. If there's anything that you guys want to see in the actual application for a bullet point that I don't have an image for or anything you want to see uh, in a little bit more depth, um, don't hesitate to just chat that in that you want to see that setting or that uh, enhancement um, on the act actual application. And at the end of this webinar, we will get to it. Um, but the first two bullet points are the images that you're going to see on this right side. Sorry, the first three bullet points, I believe. Um, one of the uh, enhancements that we made for documents, uh, you guys are probably pretty familiar at this point. When you go to uh, into a project and you click that attach document, you go into a project and you click attach document, the dialog box that opens up, uh, it had been updated in uh, a, a fairly recent update. Uh, we did change uh, the looks of that, and it's a little bit more user-friendly. But inside of a contact and a company, it hadn't been updated yet. So we did update that in the last uh, version. So when you go to up, uh, attach a document to a contact or a company, that box is now matching the same exact window that you have inside of a project. We did also... Uh, add uh, where it auto fills the project when, um, number. When you are emailing a document from the project documents module or the project documents window, sorry. So before, if you did right click on a document and you click send to email recipient, it wasn't auto filling that project number. So attaching this email to that project automatically. You could have selected it of course in the past, but now it will auto default, um, just like it would when you're emailing out a quote or a purchase order, something of the sorts from inside of a project. Uh, if you email a document, it's going to auto fill that project. The third bullet here is we added some functionality to where you can actually change how that document saves. So when, uh, when you're emailing out of eManage uh, completely, no matter where you're emailing out of, it doesn't have to be from the documents window. If you're emailing a quote or a purchase order, you can actually flip the save as now and change it to a different document type. So if you want to categorize that email differently, by default, it's going to put it in the email bucket. If you're okay with that, you just leave it as is. But if you do want to change how that email kind of categorizes itself inside of the document window, you can change it. So you're emailing a quote, maybe you want to put it in the quotes bucket versus just where emails go. and kind of a, it seems like it, it might be a little bit of a catch-all. So that can kind of help keep us a little bit more organized. Uh, the last three bullets I don't have images for, um, just because I feel like they're, but again, if anybody wants to see these additional features, just let me know. Um, but uh, we uh, will now allow for deleting documents when you add it to an action item that hasn't yet been submitted. So if you already submitted an action item, you cannot go back and delete a document that was attached to a submitted action item. But before you click that submit button, if you do want to delete a document, you should just be able to highlight it and hit delete on your keyboard now. We also updated the pre-populated name on a receiver. So when you're in the receiving module, uh, one of those little tiny time savers that we can add in, rather than rewriting what that, um, how that should be named, the document itself, the receiver document, it's just going to name it automatically for you, kind of like how we do the quotes or the purchase orders. We did also make an adjustment on the uh, quote document when you go to save a quote to your project document from within the quote window. It actually will add the project number in front of the quote number now. We saw some dealers just doing that. Um, so we found that it doesn't hurt just to add that in so that you guys don't have to do that any longer if you felt that that was necessary. Some web service enhancements, super excited about this one. This, this top one, top two, really only apply to my Hayworth dealers. So I'm going to breeze over them. But if any of my Hayworth dealers are on the call and you have any additional questions or issues, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. But uh, we did finally get the uploader for a document into the Hayworth web services. So you can actually upload documents from within eManage now to the Hayworth, uh, to links. Um, so you, the way to do this, there's a couple different ways. The way that I think that most people are going to be using it is when you go to actually uh, process an order. So within the batch entry window, 
you'll just click that attach documents checkbox and it'll load up all the documents for that project. And you'll just click inside this attach checkbox right here, right there. There is a checkbox here as well called is PO. Um, and if it is the customer PO, you would want to mark that as well. Um, again, you must download your default grid layouts. Um, this one specifically, uh, I'll talk about it again in a little bit, probably. But if we've added fields into the database, you got to download those default grid layouts in order to see those fields in the field chooser. Um, you can also go into the documents within a project and right click on it and upload document to links that way. So maybe you forgot to upload the document or you need to add an additional document after you process the order, you can go that route as well. So pretty cool feature that we've been ready to push out for some time and uh, it's finally ready. So happy about that one. The second bullet here is the Hayworth lead times. Herma Miller dealers, you guys already had the lead times uh, coming back in from your pricing tool when you submit a quote for a price check. Um, Hayworth dealers, you are also going to have that feature now. Um, you'll just see a column in the bill of materials on the parts level for lead times. It should just be labeled lead times. So you might want to update your grid for the bill of materials module. Um, to add that in uh, up front or at least on the grid somewhere so you can access those lead times that are coming back in from the quote tools. Uh, the last one here quickly, uh, we just move the tool uh, bar for the corporate division selection. So if any of my web service users are on the call, when you go into batch entry, if you have multiple corporate divisions, it, in the, it used to be in the top right corner, it's now in the top left corner. Side note. That's a mobile app enhancements out here. The uh, settings that we're going to review here um, are in the desktop app, but they do affect the mobile app. So we want to make sure you're aware of those for any of my mobile app users. We did recently have a mobile app webinar. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely go to our YouTube channel and check that one out uh, where we review the mobile app. If you are on the call and you don't, know about the mobile app, more than likely it's because you're not one of our cloud users. If you want some more details on that, just reach out to me uh, directly and I can get you some more information because as of right now, only my cloud users can use the mobile app. Um, pretty cool feature here. So anyway, uh, what we did was we added a checkbox on the project contact uh, in the lower area of your project information module. And it says installation contact. If you check that box, uh, only those contacts that are selected as installation contacts are going to show up on the work order packet or the installation packet in the mobile app. If you don't select anybody or any, yeah, anybody as your installation contact, it will just default to show all. So what we're pretty much used to on the paper work orders, the, the physical document, it shows all of the uh, contacts. I want to say that this does affect my uh, my desktop users as well. I'll have to verify that, but I'm 99% I'm, I'm positive that if you check this, it also affects the actual work order document in the application as well. Um, so it does kind of affect both of you guys, uh, cloud users and prem users. But uh, again, if you don't check anything, it's going to show all of the contacts. Um, so what we're already used to, it's going one step you know, over and beyond. The idea for the app is when the guys are looking at the installation packets or our um, field crew is looking at the uh, documentation, that they're only seeing what they need to, to see, right? We don't want to confuse them on anything that they don't need to see necessarily. So uh, we're just kind of adding some features and that help, help the field crews uh, uh, focus on what they need to focus on. Um, you might need to, my suggestion there is you might want to build that into your workflow, right? Uh, it's a, a, a you're relying on a human to check that box. Um, so if you don't, if you don't check it and it's going to show all, which is fine, it's not the end of the world. But if you do want to kind of work that into your workflow, maybe there's a prerequisite you want to add to your action items and to remind a, a user to uh, go in and think about that and check that box. That's uh, right side over here. Also, again, affecting the mobile app. Um, we added some functionality to select which documents show on the actual installation packet in the app. So again, in the administrator application under tools, 
report logo settings. You'll select your uh, company. And then down at the bottom left corner, you get to choose what document type show in the mobile app. They'll still be able to go, I'm sorry, on the installation packet. You'll still be able to go into a project, go into the documents and see all of the documents. But on the installation packet specifically, again, trying to make sure that we only show what we need to show to the field crew, um, what documents do they need to have access to. So if you only check drawings, when they open up their install packet, it's only going to show drawings. Some uh, uh, reporting enhancements here, quite a few, but again, not all showing images here. Um, we did add a new day planner item for projects that have progress pictures or gallery images uploaded. Uh, you will need to go in uh, to, so my admins will need to go in to configure day planners and uh, import, I think it says import day planner, import new day planner item, something like that in the bottom left corner. You'll need to hit that button to see this new day planner. But this also kind of uh, is affected by the mobile app. We have a feature in the mobile app where you can actually upload progress pictures from the app. Um, but, you know, again, relying on a human to, to update you that, you know, a progress picture has been uploaded can sometimes be tricky. So uh, having a day planner item that captures uh, recently uploaded progress pictures um, can be helpful. Um, on top of, if you're not aware, we do have a, a portfolio feature in the system. Um, you want to learn more about that, go check out the help guide, um, but reach out to me if you have additional questions. But uh, a portfolio is basically like showing off a, a job that you're really proud of. Um, and you can uh, use those progress pictures to build a portfolio, basically. So being alerted that, uh, you know, progress pictures have been uploaded um, so that you can take those necessary steps uh, to review or create a portfolio um, can be helpful. The second bullet here, uh, allow projects with no remaining receivables, uh, drop off the cash flow grid. So underneath the today panel, there's a cash flow management grid. Cash flow management is basically everything that you have outgoing and incoming as far as accounting goes. What, you know, what uh, bills do I have to go out and what uh, receivables do I have to collect? Um, the issue there, the pain point was that uh, sometimes I need to clear something off manually off of my cash flow grid. Um, sometimes I have uh, unbilled costs that have been sitting for a very, very long time um, and all receivables have been already accounted for. Uh, and I just want to clear it off. And maybe when the bill does come in, maybe I just address it at that point. But um, yeah, to keep that cash flow grid up to date as best as possible, you need to clear something out. You can complete the order. And if there is unbilled cost on that order, it will warn you. It's going to say, hey, you've got some unbilled costs. Are you sure you want to clear this out? Uh, you hit yes. You're, you're holding yourself responsible that you, you've acknowledged that there was unbilled cost on that order and you do want to actually clear it out. Um, again, that's only if there's no remaining receivables. So we, we kind of always want to make sure that we're collecting those receivables. The third uh, uh, bullet here, additional fields were added to the order status grid. Uh, again, that's under the today panel, order status. We added, and also it is under your project information module. So if you want to look at it on a per project basis, the order status of a project, if you're unfamiliar, definitely check out that order status tab in the project info module. Uh, otherwise, it's also a, a full report for all of your open orders underneath the today panel. But we added a PO count, which I am really happy about because uh, there's, if you're unfamiliar, there's already, you know, acknowledgement count and um of those acknowledgements, how many of them have been received? And you have all these uh, fields uh, as far as uh, you know uh, tracking that order, but there wasn't a field to tell me, okay, well, uh, maybe I have three acknowledgements, but how many POs did I have? Um, so that I can see uh, of those five POs, I only have three acknowledgements. So I must have two other acknowledgements that still need to be added. So a helpful field there. We also added in user contact info in terms of sale. Most of those last uh, bits were um, customer requested. And so those were added in, but can be helpful for everyone. So any fields you want to be added into a report, if we can do it, we're gonna do it if it's helpful for everybody. 
So that's why we constantly say, reach out to us. Let us know what you guys need. We listen and we're adding them in. Uh, the next bullet here, we added a, a navigator to the profit report. Uh, if you're familiar with like the commissions report, maybe, or even a, a quote report, you have sometimes a navigator on the left side that you can click on to get to things quickly. For the profit report, we added the salespeople navigator. So you can click on a salesperson and just jump right to that area uh, of that report. Um, so, yeah. We also added the end user to the BOM report. So when you go to print a BOM report from the view quotes tab, um, when you go to print the BOM report, so not the quote, but the BOM report, it will just add the end user. Uh, I think it's in the top right corner of that report. Uh, the two images on the right are for this last bullet. Uh, we did add the ship to company information to not only the vendor acknowledgement grid, so right when you click add acknowledgement, but also to the vendor acknowledgements grid from the today panel. So when you go today, there's a vendor acknowledgements report showing you all the vendor acknowledgements that the product hasn't been received for yet. So everything you're expected to be ship shipping in. We added the ship to uh, so that, you know, when you're adding the acknowledgement, you can verify the shipping address uh, at the time of acknowledge acknowledgement. And then, of course, from a uh, bird's eye view, right, when you're looking at the, all the vendor acknowledgements, if you need to verify that as well or just double check it rather than going into multiple places in the system, you can just check it in those windows now. Again, another customer request uh, there. So we added that in. A couple of other miscellaneous enhancements. Uh, this one's huge uh, for me specifically. I feel like there was a pain point with auto freight parts. If you're unfamiliar with auto freight parts, now is definitely the time to check this out. A huge pain point with that was that you couldn't remove the freight part easily from uh, the BOM. Uh, if you did set up the vendor, let's say, you know, you uh, always pay, you know, 2% of list price for nine to five, um, and maybe it's capped out at anything over $10,000. But for whatever reason, you you know need to remove it on a per quote basis. Maybe you got uh, approval from the vendor to just you know bypass freight, or um, you know maybe for whatever reason there's no freight to be added on to this quote. Auto freight parts are to help us remember, you know, to to think about that. But also auto freight parts calculate your freight. Um, you know, it's for those manufacturers that aren't super over complicated. Um, so we can't handle, you know, the different tier uh, freight pricing. Um, but most of our vendors uh, are, you know, pretty basic structure. So if you add that in and you want to remove the freight, you can just right click on a line item in the BOM and click toggle auto freight. And if I had, you know, hundreds of different parts for let's say Hayworth uh, from the screenshot here, it will toggle off the auto freight for all of your Hayworth parts just by right clicking on one of them and removing it. And then you can go in and add a manual line for you know, surcharge or freight or whatever if you needed to, but it will remove the auto, the auto calculating auto for you. Sorry about that. Got my phone. Um, and then if you wanna turn it back on, you just right click, toggle auto freight again, and it'll just add that freight phase back on for you and add the calculations back in for you automatically. So it is a uh, forwards and backwards. Uh, again, huge pain point that we were seeing. If you deleted it and like refreshed your BOM or added a new part, it would automatically add it back in. So you can completely turn it off on a per quote basis now. Pretty excited about that one. If you wanted to learn more about auto freight parts, there's a short little video on our YouTube channel about that. Um, and uh, you should definitely check that out. The second one here, we added a scope builder to create purchase order um, into the create purchase order module uh, for the special in instructions and the Mark IV fields. Previous to this, uh, what I know from experience, I think dealers were either using the scope builder in the view purchase order module, or they were using the snippet in the lower right corner of the entire application, there's a snippet um, 
uh, feature where you can do some predefined text. If you're unaware what scope builders are, that's basically what it is. It's predefined text, text that I'm typing over and over and over again. Um, so save you guys some time. Uh, you can add those uh, uh, builders in um, and just click on it, grab it, add it in. And now those um, that text will apply to every single purchase order that you create. So that's in the create purchase order module. Scope builders have been added to both. So special instructions is really where it's going to be useful. You know, warehouse hours, call before delivery instructions, things like that. You can add to that scope builder and just boom, boom, add it in and move on. A couple of other uh, last uh, miscellaneous enhancements. Um, again, in the purchase order window, uh, view purchase order module, we added a edit um, in, in the edit tab so in the new edit item tab so if you double click on a line item from your PO item it'll open up the part that you've selected and if you needed to adjust the parts category for whatever reason you could um, but where this really comes into play is when people are adding manual line items to a purchase order so you click that new edit item and you just start typing before this update you had to remember to go and select the parts category on the actual line item after you added it in, which could cause some problems when you get to the receiving module or even acknowledgements, I think, uh, is definitely causing some issues if you forgot to do it. So now it's a little bit more intuitive and it forces you to add that in at the time of adding a new line item in. Okay. Uh, lastly, we added a user setting uh, for always request return receipt for action items. So if you're a non-salesperson, uh, if you, you should already, most of you should already be aware, if you're a salesperson, you're automatically, typically going to be set up to receive alerts automatically when action items are completed or rejected. If you're a salesperson, you, you should already be set up to get those. But if you're not a salesperson and you're someone who submits action items on the regular, you can actually tell the system now that I always want to get an alert back. That's what request return receipt is. So when you're submitting an action item, there's a little request return receipt checkbox to get an alert back. Um, you could forget to check it and shoot. I, now I'm not going to get an alert when that's completed or rejected. Me, I, my preference, I, I, I definitely prefer to just always get an alert back. I'd rather get an alert than not get one when I truly needed it. So in, and this is a, per user setting for my non-sales folks. So if you go into tools, configure user settings, you'll get this box popped up here and you'll click on personal settings. And in the bottom left, you'll see always request return receipt in action, in action items. And it'll just always give you an alert when an action item is completed or rejected. Cool. That's all of our enhancements, the big enhancements, of course. So um, check out the release notes to make sure you've got your arms wrapped around all of the, the enhancements that just came out. Those are definitely the big ones I wanted to review. Lots of other issues resolved as well. This is a good amount right here on my screen, so I'm going to go through these. Um, but there are some additional ones as well, so definitely check out those release notes. But here, what we're seeing, uh, I kind of categorize them by department or topic, if you will. Um, but some issues that were resolved, some bugs. Uh, for my operations team, there was a, an issue with being able to delete installation items, so your actual parts and pieces, your product in an actual scheduled installation item. That's been resolved, so you shouldn't have any problems deleting anything off if you need to. So that comes into play sometimes when you, when you add, uh, let's say, uh, 10 different line items from one PO, but yet you know something was back ordered, and so we're only going to deliver out the first nine items you would just highlight the 10th item and just delete it off. And then when you go to schedule the next time for that same job, it's only gonna allow you to add on that 10th that item, if you will, so any items that you hadn't already scheduled. So yeah, deleting items off, not a problem anymore. Uh, scope builder on the installation items, apparently there was an issue there, so that's been resolved. Um, if you are using scope builder, don't know very many, dealers that are using it. So someone discovered it. Someone's using it out there and let us know. Um, but uh, if you are using that, there's no issues there now. Uh, existing installation items, uh, when you double click on it, it required you to hit save in order to see the items to install tab 
previous to this update. Now, when you double click on an installation item from the install calendar, something already existing, it will just uh, have the items to install visible now where you can just click on it and, and review or add anything that you need to add there. So the save button is no longer required. In the receiving module, uh, previous to this update, you would click on uh, an acknowledgement on the top section to receive that product from that acknowledgement. And it would show all the product on that PO, regardless of what was actually acknowledged. Um, that was something that we weren't aware of for some time and uh, someone let us know. So now when you click on an acknowledgement, it's only gonna show you what was acknowledged. So you can receive based on usually, you know, you're, you're receiving based off of what was acknowledged uh, and, you know, those acknowledged ship dates and whatnot. Uh, lastly, for operations, the exclamation exclamation mark on the uh, on the calendar on all your little install items that are stacked up on the calendar. It wasn't uh, there was a little bug there. Um, we thought we had addressed it, but now it should definitely be addressed. Uh, when all your product is fully received, that exclamation point should definitely be removed. So it's a little reminder or a red flag, if you will. Um, when something hasn't been fully received on that order. So if it's there, not, uh, something hasn't been fully received. For web services, big, big bug. Uh, apologize for any inconveniences this, this will cause. But for any of my web service uh, uh, dealers out there, uh, Hayworth, Herman Miller, um, I think that's it. For the quote tool, uh, when you go to send something through for a price check, it was uh, re returning incorrect pricing that has been resolved. Uh, last one for web services uh, only affects my Technion dealers. If I have any Technion dealers on the call, um, you can now have multiple Technion vendors set up in your web service settings to uh, go into the Technion batch entry to convert to a Technion SIF. Um, before, you could only have one Technion vendor set up in our system. Now you can definitely have multiple. Again, any of these that anybody needs some additional stuff on, just let me know and information on. Some accounting uh, uh, issues that were resolved, uh, mostly all relating to service agreements. Um, so I'll breeze through these because I, I know that there's only a few handful of dealers that are using service agreements. Uh, commissions uh, weren't, uh, there was a bug with the commission report in regards to service agreements that's been addressed. Also, unmarking commissions as paid, if, um, uh, I'm sorry, marking commissions as unpaid, maybe after you had already marked them as paid, that's been resolved. And then also uh, there was an issue with checking and unchecking sent to accounting on a service agreement payment. It, would, it wasn't properly adding and removing to the QuickBooks integration app, that's been resolved as well. Some quote bugs, uh, that when we did the expiration date change, we found another bug. So uh, uh, making sure that the, the expiration date is reflecting properly on expired quotes, that's all good now. We recently uh, implemented a client that brought this to my attention. So if any of my 2020 users are on the call or are watching this later, there was an issue if you were trying to export a SIF from the bill of materials module, so you maybe you import the SIF, but then you want it you, to make a couple changes within eManage, and then now you want to export out those changes or you know export out a clean SIF file for whatever reason. Uh, our 2020 users were not able to open those from eManage. Uh, now you can do so. And then lastly, for quotes. Um, there was an issue with the approximate value logic. Uh, when you create a brand new project and you uh, put in an approximate value and you don't, you're not ready to yet create a quote, it would just hold that approximate value. But the issue that we found was that some people were either accidentally or prematurely clicking on the bill of materials module right after creating a project and it was updating the value to zero. So just wiping out that uh, manual value that you inputted um, and now what we've done is made it where it's not going to change the value until you've actually clicked the view quotes tab. So for any of my users that, you know, do go and accident, or maybe you accidentally click on the, the, the bill of materials module 
Um, you're not ready, really ready to create a quote yet. It's just going to hold the approximate value. And then again, for any of my users that are doing any quotes, if you don't click that view quotes tab, it's not going to update your approximate value. So got to click that tab in order for that value to change, which is good, I think, really good. Uh, reporting a, a, a bugs that were resolved, um, there was an issue with the day planner item that's called orders invoice fully without final invoice date. Some of you are creating like $0 invoices and those weren't clearing from that grid and now they aren't. And then lastly for reporting, we did fix the refresh button in the POs not fully acknowledged today panel item. So underneath today, PO is not fully acknowledged. The refresh button wasn't working. Maybe you just keep that open all day and you're going in and adding acknowledgements and you just want to click refresh to see what's not been acknowledged. Last couple little errors that were resolved. The scope builder, there was an issue with on service tickets, even though we're probably going to be changing the way we do service tickets pretty soon. Um, the scope builder has been fixed there. Previous to this update, you couldn't add more than one primary salesperson. You can add more than one salesperson to a, a company record, but you couldn't check that little primary box for multiple salespeople. It caused issues in a, in a couple different areas of the program. Now you can absolutely add more than one primary. So maybe it's a, a, a shared account for two different salespeople or however many. On the last one, uh, I there go look at the release notes. If you're an inventory user, there were several inventory bugs and improvements that were made. So we released the inventory. We have a couple of dealers that are out there using it really heavily that came across a couple of issues and those have been resolved. Um, if you're looking to uh, learn more about inventory uh, and what the capabilities are in eManage, the help guide uh, is pretty much done. I think there might be maybe one or two things that I wanna add um, but it definitely will get you started on how to add inventory into the system, how to manage it, how to pull from inventory and add it to a quote and things like that. So if you have any other finds on that as far as issues, just let us know. We'll get them resolved right away. But we think we've attacked them. Um, but yeah, too many to even go over <laughs> right now. So definitely check out those release notes if you have been using inventory to see what uh, we've made. And that brings me to the end. So a lot of uh, good things in this last update. Apologize for not getting this webinar completed before the update came out, but uh, we found that uh, most of them were, I don't know, pretty self-explanatory, but some of those I really like to touch on. So some features that you might not even be aware of, we want you to use. So you should get in there and dabble and check them out. And if you have any questions or issues with anything that we've released, just let us know. I'm going to open up uh, the chat room for any questions or comments, issues, um, and I'll just kind of stay on for the next five minutes or so. Uh, if there's nothing that you are concerned about, then feel free to log off. Uh, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel as normal. So you can share with the rest of your team or go back and review it if necessary. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for coming and appreciate you always making the time coming out and show some interest there. Have a great one and we'll see you soon. Uh, it looks like Alan might have a question. Oh, um, I don't know, Alan, you could try to unmute yourself, but this webinar in, uh, for Teams, there's definitely some restrictions. It's to ideally keep the, yeah, it's ideally to keep the, the background noise out. So yeah, I'll wait for you. Go ahead and just type it in. No problem, Morgan and team. Thanks for coming. has a question on the add quick contact button in a project. Uh, national uh, default grid layout, where do we do that? It's from the file menu. 
So file, download default grid layout. Uh, Kathy, why do line items from BOM to PO get out of order from BOM to PO? Why it does that is because when you convert it to a purchase order, it's separating everything out per vendor. So it's renumbering re the lines on the purchase order. And just, I'm not sure of the logic behind it. Um, but we can't use the same line numbers from the bill of materials because it wouldn't, there's something about that that won't allow us to do it. Um, but Kathy, let me follow up on that. And I assume, are you talking about in the actual PO view or are you talking about on the actual PO document? Because I feel like that is already on our list to look at. I can see about escalating it. But on the PO document, that is on our list to uh, be in the same order as far as how it is on the BOM. Just confirm, are you talking about on the actual PO document or in the grid, the PO grid itself? Yeah, yeah, the actual document. Yeah, it is on our list to enhance that and make sure that it follows the same order. Let me see about... Uh, Escalating that issue. I know that's been on there for a minute. Alan, I saw your message and then I saw it get deleted. Oh, oh, never mind, he says. <laughs> uh, Rose, how do you get to the YouTube channel? I missed the beginning. No worries. Um, it's in my signature. So if you've ever received an email from me, uh, it'll be in my signature. Otherwise, if you just go to youtube.com, you should just be able to search eManage1 and it should come up. But definitely you can access it pretty quickly from my email signature. Good, uh, good question. Now maybe I'll ask the team to add that into the help slide, a link to it. Yeah, no worries. No problem, Alan. If the if you need me to address the add quick contact, I will say for anybody who's left on on the meeting, um, the add quick contact window is going to be revamped on the next update. I believe just heads up. I find that um, my new users are really struggling with that window. I feel like after you've been an e-managed user for some time, it totally makes sense. Uh, the idea behind it is that we're preventing you guys from creating duplicates. So it kind of has like multiple functionalities that add quick contact button. Um, but it's, it's for some reason just not as user friendly as we'd like it to be. So it is going to be updated. Takes a long time to load. Mm. I don't have the same experience, but anything that takes time, anything that's about uh, how long something takes, there, there's a lot of uh, different aspects that could be affecting that. So if it's like longer than 30 seconds, we probably need to know about that. It could, I don't, I can't recall Gov Solutions, Alan. I'm not sure if you guys are on-prem or cloud, that would change some of my responses to that comment, but we can talk about that offline. All right, looks like Questions have kind of slowed down and most people have left. So I'm going to conclude the meeting. And thank you guys so much for coming and uh, reach out if you have any questions or issues. Thanks for coming. Have a good one. Bye-bye.